Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, going to hit a topic about when your narcissistic ex is trying to interfere with your parenting time by uh, introducing activities and such. And this came from a viewer question and <clears throat> excuse me, I'll read this and it'll basically just say, Dwayne, what is your take on responding and responses to a situation where the narc parent repeatedly introduces and hypes up activities for the kids during the other parent's time with the kids. It smacks of undermining and alienating alienation to me as it sets up the target parent to have to be the bad guy. If they're already made plans and say and have to say no, which of course the narc parent revels in communicating to the kids about how the targeting or the target parent is ruining their fun. Ugh, any advice on how to deal or how to diffuse the damage the narc parent is trying to do. Yeah, I've actually made videos about this in the past. If I can find them, I'll link them in the description below, or I might put them up in a, in a card. The first thing to remember on this is it is absolutely <clears throat> a triangulation move. This is, uh, this is a move to basically pit you and your kids, uh, or pit you against your children and to basically cause a rift to where it looks like you're being the bad guy and you're causing problems. Now, there's a couple of things to think about on this that, and, and part of what I'm going to say, and I'll, and I'll get to the first part, or I'll get to the difficult part later in the video, but there's two parts to this. The first one is, obviously, it's a bound, it's pushing your boundaries. It's trying to manipulate you to, to get what they want. Uh, typically, it's to also screw up uh, parenting time and to to do things such as that. And it's very common. This happens with all kinds of different things. A lot of times with kids, it's, it's uh, extracurricular activities such as sports and stuff like that. Uh, if you've seen some of my other videos, I've talked about that particular situation that I had whenever I put my um, youngest who wanted to play soccer into soccer. I didn't do it to try to say that, you know, to, to interfere with her parenting time because I double checked to make sure that they didn't care, right? If, if, um, if uh, she could go 50% of the time. And it, you see, the thing is, you could look at that and say that I'm trying to interfere with what's going on. And all I was trying to do is what the kid wanted to do. I, to, to, to trust me, let me just be clear right now. I don't know how you parents deal with sports and all those extracurricular curricular activities, but holy cow, what a pain. You know, I mean, trying to get, I mean, just, just the whole thing. I mean, it was, I mean, to be perfectly honest, I was supportive of it the entire time. And I was, <laughs> I was a little grateful, a little bit, whenever my daughter finally decided she didn't want to play anymore. But I didn't, I never said that to her. As long as she wanted to do it, I supported it. Here's the thing, and that's not necessarily a great example because in what I just said could be construed as me trying to interfere with her parenting time, and that's the way she took it. I mean, she freaked out and basically said I was committing a crime. It was illegal for me to do that and whatever. And I'm like, look, I already checked. You don't have to take her on your practice times. If you want to, here's the information, whatever. The only time it was where I wanted to do something is for the, for the group picture uh, where I was like, hey, X. Um, this Saturday, which is your Saturday, it's the group picture. Can I please just take her to get a picture with her team? I won't let her play the game. I'll just grab her and I'll bring her back. Nope. The answer is no. Um, and like I, like I said, this wasn't to try to create a problem. This was to do something. Actually, like I said, it would have been hell of a lot easier if the, uh, if my daughter would have been like, no, I don't want to do any of that, but whatever. Okay. <clears throat> The crazy part about this is, is it really seems that the, the, the higher conflict parent can get away with murder and, um, there's no consequences, right? I mean, it's like, God forbid I do anything. I'll get into the next part about this in a minute, but God forbid I say no on something. And I'm like, you know, Attila the fricking Hun. And, I, and I'm sure you're dealing with the same thing, right? That, uh, you're having this to where whenever you, you know, you say no, it freaks out, but if there's something you want to do and he says no, it, uh, and I'm assuming maybe I got the genders wrong, but you know, I'm assuming that's what we're talking about. Here's the trap. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, it is an absolute triangulation move. This is just to, to create conflict and to, to then be able to use it against you, right? 
I had this and I, and I won't go into a lot of detail. Like I said, if I can find the video, I'll put it in because I talked about this last, uh, last year, I think it was last year, maybe it was a year before last. Um, it was a year where, uh, it was my vacation time. We picked the time, whatever. And the X came up with this, this special event right in the middle of it. And, uh, you know, triangulated my daughter with me. I, I knew the second that that's here. And this is the second part. I knew the second that that happened. I knew the second I got the email from the ex saying, oh, hey, by the way, um, I know it's your vacation time, but this special event happened and we're going to do a sleepover. And so, you know, the, you know, are you okay with it? Now, a normal parent who isn't trying to triangulate would, would and this is what I would have done. I would have brought it up, said, hey, can we do this? And if the other person ignored me or said no, then I would have just left it. But that's not what these people do. They use it as a triangulation move to <clears throat> put it to pit the kids against you. So like I said, when that happened in my situation, I knew I already lost because I knew my daughter would just, if I said no, it didn't matter if we were going to the Bahamas. And I actually asked my daughter this at one point because she was giving me grief about, about making this trip happen. And I said, yeah, you're going to get to go because if we were going to, to the Hawaii or the Bahamas, you know, and I said, no, it would be a Greek tragedy. And she confirmed that she would make my life a living hell had that been the case. Okay, so this gets into the, my opinion on what the realistic view and the realistic approach or the best approach on this is. I'd venture to guess, and not a, not a lot of you are going to be real happy with this, but if at all possible find a way to accommodate the event. Now, granted in that scenario, I just said where, you know, if we were, if it would have been true that we were going out of town, I already had the tickets, already dumped the money. Realistically, and I know it, realistically, it would have been, okay, fine. You don't get to go. Not a problem. Enjoy your time with your friends. And more than likely knowing my ex and how wonderful she can be, uh, probably would have been, well, I can only have them for those two days. The rest of the time is your time and you need to have them, but it doesn't matter. You know, it's like, but I'll be in Hawaii. That's the type of crap that they do. That's why I've also kind of, uh, backed off on what we're doing. I, we don't tell the kids what's going on because I don't, because every time we've done it, the ex is sabotage. I've made tons of videos about, about sabotaging events. So I don't necessarily need to go into that. But the, but the issue is, is that you get into a situation where, they, they just work to, to undermine everything you possibly can. I could, just to clarify or just to back up on this, I remember at one point when I said, hey, no problem, because of the way we had our, our vacation, I could move things around. I said, hey, not a big deal. This Monday and Tuesday, you absolutely go have a great time in this, in this camping trip sleepover with just the girl. Also on this whole thing, it was, it was only a girl thing. So I was also directed that I will have my son um, and, you know, and the other girls would be going with her. There was no discussion. It was like, this is the way it's going to be. So in the whole thing with that, the, the, the compromise, I said, not a problem. I'll just swap my two days for, you know, the two days, the same days earlier in the week. I can do what we were going to do. Not a big problem. Kind of a decent compromise, right? So it's like, okay, I'm supposed to have this block of time with the kids. I'm losing part of it. So just make it up with the other thing. X freaked out when uh, my daughter came, walked in the door on transition day. I got flambayed that how dare I make this about me? This is about her. Why am I trying to ruin her trip? And I'm like, whoa, back up, back up. Boop, boop, boop. You know, what exactly are you talking about? I'm facilitating you going on your trip and I'm just making sure that we still get to do what we're going to do. So I had to, I had to systematically calm, be calm and explain to my daughter what was going on, how it wasn't affecting your trip, but this was still making sure that we could do what we wanted to do. And it was all good. Right. And she backed and she calmed down. That also is probably one of the reasons why it actually happened is because when she calmed down, then when with her mom trying to ramp her up, I wasn't feeding into it. And it, it, it uh, diffused the situation. So again, think about what I just said, talking about feeding into it. When your ex, like in this situation, like in the, in the comment that you left, your ex is trying to get you to get into an argument with the kids. Now, if the other parent has been able to create this event, and it's even worse whenever it's like in my situation, I was just talking about where it's like, it's with the other parent. So it's like, okay, it's your time, but now there's this thing Another, you know, there's this, there's this convention that your kids really want to go to and they want to go to it with, uh, with dad. 
And you know, actually, I'm actually now that I'm talking about this, this actually happened to me. <laughs> there was a few years back, there was one of those uh, those uh, those cons in our local town, and uh, the the my daughter wanted to go, and it was on her mom's weekend. And exactly that. It's like one of those things that, you know, I mean, it was one of those things I couldn't say no, right? I mean, it was, I mean, okay, yes, I could say no, but it was an alienating move to, to cause problems between me and my daughter. What he's doing is he's trying to get a rift between you and your kids. And guys, don't, for the specific person, do not fall for the bait. It's a trap. It's a trap. Don't fall for the bait. That's exactly what's going on. They're, they're, it, so if you can accommodate it at all, that try to do it. And it, and the only caveat I have on this, the last little part on this that I want to say, the, the caveat is if alienation is also going on and you're getting a boatload of grief for it. Now, remember in my story, I just mentioned, I was getting grief, right? But I didn't, I didn't, it, it's a balancing act. This is this whole, this whole thing is a balancing act. If it's happening and they're coming back and they're basically treating you like garbage because they think you're, you're feeling that you're a Satan spawn, then that's a different issue, and then you'll have to adjust to 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 whether you you do it or not. Because in that situation, you're doing everything right, and you're already basically losing. I don't know if that makes sense. You'll have to let me know in the comments below if that makes sense. But but bottom line, guys, he, he, the guiding force on this, and I and I and this will be a little irritating for people too. But it really is, quote unquote, the best interest of the kids. And and I don't mean. Because I could look at that and you could also say, well, Dwayne, the best interest of the kids is they shouldn't have extra time with the toxic parent, right? Don't, that's, I get that, I get that thought process, but be careful going down that rabbit hole because it can cause you problems. What I mean is, is what exactly is best for your kids? The other example I think, because I did actually reply to this comment, uh, to the video or to the, to the comment that was made on a video. Also try to think about it that if you weren't dealing with this toxic person and this thing came up, would you let them go? Right. If, uh, you know, if, uh, somebody else would say like, let's say the, 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 the con thing, right. Let's say someone said, Hey, I want, you know, your, your kid says, Hey, I want to go with Miss Susie. Who's a, you know, Janet's friend. I'm just making names up here, you know, to go to this con. And, uh, would you, you know, would you let them go? Right. And if the answer is leaning towards yes, then I would say, if at all possible, try to facilitate them them going. Now, the conversely, what I will say on this is, is another trap to be careful of, depending on that. And I don't know, uh, this is a new subscriber, so I haven't seen a lot of comments from them, so I don't know completely their story. But this is the other thing I would say. Let's say hypothetically, your um, your ex, like, like this person said, is a narcissist, and they've been... Um, neglecting or not really, really part of the, you know, uh, really part of their kids' lives. Keep in mind that children really want the love from both parents. And when that toxic parent is throwing them breadcrumbs, they're going to bend over backwards to try to make it happen. Okay. So keep, keep in mind that you, you know, you could be the stable parent. You're the stable parent. The kids feel great with you. They have most of the time with you, or let's just even say they have it's equal time, but they feel stable with you and they're not getting their emotional needs really met from the other parent. Now the other parent comes along and says something like, Hey, you know, you like to go to this thing. Let's go together. Right. And now the child really wants to go. And it's, it's because they think it's because the, the parent wants to spend time with them. I've got, I've received comments from different people who have explained how, or have shared their story of how hurt they were when that parent did that to them basically said, Oh, I want you know, let's go to Disneyland. Let's go to this. Let's go do something together. And they think, Oh my God, this parent wants to spend time with me. And then later they realize it had nothing to do with them. It had nothing to do with them. It was all about that. The other parent wanted to go and the child was an accessory and it had nothing to do with the kids. Guys, you probably have done. I know I have. How many things have you done with your kids that you had no desire to do, but you did because you knew it was important to them, right? I know I have. I'm pretty sure you guys have narcissistic personality type people, toxic personality types. It's about them. The kid, it's, it has nothing to do with the kids. And, but you can't tell your kids that, right? You know, you can't turn around and say, Hey, this is an orchestrated event just because, you know, your other parent 
is trying to manipulate you. Be very, very, very cautious of getting caught in that trap, taking that bait, and basically playing a critical role in the alienation of your own kids against yourself. Okay, so uh, hopefully it makes sense. Hopefully that addresses that question uh, appropriately. Would love to hear your comments. I know just from viewing this channel for a couple of years, I know that this story resonates with a lot of people. So if you have something you would like to share about your experience, that's always helpful. When you do that, please do that. Uh, if you like this channel and you think it's helpful, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification so that YouTube will actually tell you about a video. If you click over here, if the card's up, it'll be my mindset for narcissistic abuse recovery. Again, like I say often, if uh, you're new to the channel, check it out. If you need a refresher, check it out because sometimes those older videos, uh, when you listen to them the second time, they speak to you in a different way. And since YouTube likes to recommend videos for you, the card up at the top will be a video that YouTube has specifically picked for you because of the way you search and what they think you might be looking for, which is really creepy how they pretty much are accurate sometimes. It's, I, I don't, some of that times that stuff's just really weird. Okay, on that, have a great day. Hopefully that was helpful and I will chat with you on the next video. Take care.